Hi, I'm KS Garner, and you're listening to the Solo Nerdbird Podcast. Today, I'll be speaking with the creator and comics writer of the comic series Sacrifice, Laurent Vallez Jr., here to promote his upcoming third installment on Kickstarter. Welcome, Laurent. Hey, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. But uh, outside of my introduction, who is Laurent Vallez Jr., and what are you about? Uh, I am a 32-year-old uh, Army vet uh comic writer i've loved storytelling and writing since i mean i've loved comics for most of my life but uh the act of writing and telling stories since i was about 18 um you know progressing there doing like small stuff wanting to make comics until i realized comics take money to make and it took me a little bit to make enough money to do that um had a web comic come out uh lasted for about 100 pages before finance stopped that um had my little stint in the army got out to pursue comics um mainly because you can only do so much when leave is restricted and you can't really go to conventions and meet and greets and all that um and here i am now uh i am on my third installment like you said the art was just finished last week so it's just being colored up and then lettering and then i'll i'll be good to go okay so what is your comic series sacrifice about So Sacrifice is a horror comedy series. Uh, The pitch is Hellboy meets Evil Dead. The super-powered host of Lucifer has two goals. To find allies that can help him stop Lucifer from bringing hell to Earth, and to make enough money in fighting demons to keep the lights on. Okay, so what should readers expect um, from, I guess, in the third issue, after reading issues one and two? So what are, okay, so I should reverse that. What... (laughs) What are issues one and two about, and what should readers expect for issue three? So, uh, without going too into spoilers, uh, issue one uh, sets up the world. You get to see why it is that Damien, the main character, is tied to Lucifer, why it would bring about the end of the world. Um, You get to see, through the eyes of a character named May, who is one of the other protagonists, what it's like for a person who has no connection to any of this supernatural stuff going on, because it's not knowledge to common people uh, it's very hidden underneath the surface so as the reader you and may go along the same journey of like oh what is all this stuff to people who see this as commonplace so issue one kind of sets the stage for types of things to expect issue two you get the rest of the main characters uh you get to see how the people who function that world regularly work and it kind of really dives you into what the plot line of the first arc will be uh, the first arc scripted to be six issues. Um, so in that, you get to see our protagonist split into two groups, one of them finding out what's happening with this uh, evil cult, and the other two, which is what you'll see in issue three, is finding out more about the spell book that shows me, because her whole deal on how she got wrapped in this being a normal girl to in here is an ancient and powerful spell book, shows her to be its master. Demons and certain forces were trying to get a hold of her because of that, and now you're going to find out a little bit about why and how some of the world works. Okay. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on your creative process on sacrifice from just a thought in your head that you had that was inspired by, you know, Hellboy and Meets the Evil Dead to now uh, promoting it on Kickstarter, like publishing it, publishing it first, the first two issues, and then now promoting the third issue on Kickstarter? Of course. Uh, so the idea kind of came from like a lot of areas, but certain things that like I've picked up from like just media in general is like, oh, I like how certain things, how certain like, uh, shows or movies or whatnot, like do this. I use Hellboy and Evil Dead because I really like horror comedy series. Uh, Hellboy is less on the horror, but it, it does definitely have that like supernatural, like goofiness to it, especially if you read it. Um, not so much in the movies. And Evil Dead is just like goofy all the way through. I love the stuff where the main characters like are the, the situation you're in is a nightmarish. No one were gonna be here, but because of how the main characters play it off, it can become play off as like entertaining for the reader. And I've always loved that type of stuff. So when I was writing like stories and I was thinking about different things to write, uh, that really stuck out to me. I was like, okay, I could try and write a different thing, but let me let me focus entirely on what my strengths are especially if I'm making a product that like, you know, people would pay for, they want something high quality. Instead of me being like, I, I'll experiment with things later where I, like I want to write for now. It's like, what do I know I can do well so that people you know, are like, hey, I want to support, I want to buy it. 
I feel like they can get their money's worth and enjoy it. And from what I heard from the reception, people have liked it. So I guess my my next question would be is how difficult was it or if it even or if it even was difficult for you with world building for this? Like demons and like literal hellraisers, you know, people that want to bring Lucifer to the surface. In, in end all mankind, it's not really an original idea, but how did you design and structure sacrifice so it stands alone as yours in your world and not someone else's? Because as I was reading it, um, it's definitely something that I'm into, stuff that I write as well. I write a lot of my own urban fantasy, not horror, but my urban fantasy is kind of mixed with action adventure and a little bit of comedy in it. It's like, they're just, how, just like how you explained it, how, you know, um, with the evil, with um, the Evil Dead, um, about how they're in this like horrific situation, but they still find the humor in it in a way. So that's kind of how like my characters are in their environment. It's kind of like you kind of have to find the humor in it, or you'll die. That's just like a like a coping mechanism, kind of in a way. Mm-hmm. So how how does your world set apart from others? in a way, even though you've taken bits and pieces or you were inspired by other works from other people? So I try and do that by making that fine line at inspired by. If you read the series, there's very clear lines like, oh, he was inspired by this and that. But outside of like nods to it, I don't like fully go into it. Like there are characters, like uh, a Van Helsing is is in the series. Like that's uh, from Bram Stoker's Dracula. And I had the name there because, like, in the way I made this world is, like, everything exists. Because I, I hit a certain point where I was limiting to a couple of things. And I was like, let me just have some fun with it. Elves, leprechauns, uh, Van Helsing, like, everything you can think of. So Van Helsing's there, but if you read his character, I'd be shocked if anyone could find, like, anyone else from, like, any type of, like, Dracula type. Um, like, hey, like, hey, this is a Dra- somewhere in the Dracula mythos. That was anywhere like it. Like I, I, the name is there, but they're their own people. I, it's just a nod there, just kind of like flush out the world a bit more. Um, not just as that, but like when I get into, it, you'll see a bit more of it in issue three when you get more into magic three and four especially. Um, but I, I have my inspirations there, and I have a lot of things where it's like, all right, everything's dictated on my story, my uh, my uh, characters, and how they proceed, and a lot of it's kind of built around, not built around them because I want the world to be fleshed out and believable but nothing's ever really tied to that it's more so people who are uh how do I people who live in this world is like vibrant but you they're all doing believable things and because it's more so focused on that you see how they're reacting to things versus like oh this is he he got this from dracula that's why all this stuff is happening or oh he got this from uh, what's something else uh, frankenstein frankenstein's name dropped too i was like but even then that's just a name drop it's not something that dictates the story so I feel like that gives me a lot of freedom because like hey there's a little inspiration there's a little nod but it doesn't go past that into the plot is dictated by these things it's like you're not trying to pretend like the stuff doesn't exist like yeah we all know about you know the famous hunter Van Van Helsing we know about leprechauns we know about the fae but you know that stuff is like it happened and and it exists, but in this, I guess, in this particular city, in this particular instance, this is what we're focusing on right here. So, I mean, I, that's why I like, it's not like pretending like the stuff doesn't exist. And what I also like about it is that you kind of don't drag it out in a way, like a lot of the scenes or action sequences, the stuff is not dragged out too much. Like, you know what's happening, and then it's action panels, and so you don't need a lot of the script in there, or I should say dialogue. But it gets kind of to the point in a way, because there was one scene where um, I guess one of the bad guys was about to give a speech and sacrifice just cut him off. He's like, there's no need for that. There's no need for that. We already know what you're up to. Just, sh- just show me where I need to go. So I, I kind of appreciated that as well. And in, um, in I think it was issue two. Yeah. But um. So switching gears a bit, how was your experience searching for collaborators and how did you know that they were the right people for this job? Uh, so it all starts with my uh, 
artist, uh, UJ Chen, who I found him through a Facebook group. It's Facebook Colorist for Hire, which, you know, you put on your post and then, you know, if people are interested, they'll respond if they're not. It wasn't for this. It was a project that I was doing before this, but I ended up like stopping to focus on sacrifice. And I, I kind of put out, hey, here's what this is. Here's my plan, blah, blah, blah. And I had like a hundred and something comments. Uh, it's not just colors. I know I mentioned the name of the group. It's colors and artists and all that. And I was like, wow, okay, this is a lot. And I looked through everyone's portfolio. And I narrowed it down to the three whose art style. I was like, this is what I, uh, this is what I want to work with. Because I had an idea for how I wanted this to be. I wanted to have like something that if you saw us in stores and you didn't see like a Marvel, DC, IDW, or not, like you, you just see a comic there and you'd be like, this is a professional thing I'd see in stores. So I narrowed it down to three. And after that, I kind of like did my own little interviews with each of them because I have all the faith in like myself. And then if I can get like a good team, a good team together, like we can push for it and get picked up and or at least if not get picked up by publishers and like go far self-promoting. Um, and when I talked to them, I, one of them honestly, I, I couldn't remember what their answers were, but I was like, okay, you know, so you, you do this for fine. The other one did it very much for a job, but then UJ was like me in the sense of everything he wants to do. He wants to make sure he's constantly getting better. He wants to put out fantastic work and have his name tied to it. Like it's always about getting better and, and striving for that and, and getting in the industry. It was also his dream. And we just matched up on so many things for like what I see, not specifically for a part of it, for like myself, because I hold myself at a very high standard for what I want to put out. And he was the exact same. I was like, nailed it. Uh, so I picked him up. Uh, colorist, same website. Um, the person who I actually picked is not who I have on this. The one who's on this project um, was like a close second. It was just for what I was trying to do with that story. I felt like that coloring style was a bit more of a fit. And then I switched over to this project and he was, you know, a pleasure to talk to. He also kind of knew what he was talking about as far as a professional manner, picked him. And then my letter, I think uh, I had a different letter at the time, but there was a uh, schedule conflict. I was like, I can't make this work. And I found someone else on Kickstarter who uh, they had just learned something. I was like, I like the lettering on this lot because I pay a lot of, a lot of attention to, to that at times because you can have a great book, but the lettering will kill it. Reached out to him is uh, Lucas Catoni. And it's been a pleasure working with him ever since. So you don't have to answer this. I've just a question that came to my mind. Um, with everything included, as far as like um, hiring people and then printing goes and then promoting it, how much does how much does it cost to publish a comic? Like so that depends. Um, because a lot of it comes down to your art team and how much you want to do. Uh -huh. You could like, you could go cheap on certain things like, hey, okay, I could get some type of software to, uh, to edit and, or not to edit to like letter and all that and do my own lettering or, hey, I could learn some coloring or flatting and do my own stuff. Um, I wouldn't advise that. There's people who can do it and can do it very well. Um, there's people who who do it and it comes out all right, but all right isn't what I'm looking for. Um, so to answer that, it would really depend on how you want your book to come out looking. There's that saying, you get what you pay for. The people who are the higher price talents are typically worth those prices for a reason. So uh, you could, there's people out there who could probably spend as little as like maybe a grand or two uh, on their comic, depending on how much they need done you know, even if, like if it was a black and white book, that right cuts, cuts off like a lot of price there. Or you could go like all out, like I'm hiring the best team I could find from highest price people just to make sure I, you know, get with the quality I want and be in like the, you know, upper thousands. Uh, so like for mine specifically, uh, it's about 5,000 an issue. Um, but there, there's a lot of ways that that could go depending on what people want to do. Okay, so advice. What advice would you offer to other artists you wish someone would have told you when you first started? 
They can um, be writing comics. They can be looking for artists. Like, man, had I known, I'd have went this route instead of going this route. Or even as far as knowing um, the budget-wise and how much to pay, like how much is too much or how much is too little. So uh, there's a couple of ways to answer that. As far as like the budget part, that would come down to your own job and what you value most. Because you could, you know, if someone's like, if you're like, hey, man, I found these fantastic bars. I feel like he's perfect for me. He's a little pricey. He feels it could be perfect for you and you can afford it. Fine. Like, don't put your, don't like put so much into your comic that you can't pay your own bills. Like, you know, they're, you know, know where, where the line is. And if you can make things work and stay inside that line, then then do whatever you think is right. Even if it's like, hey, this guy's more expensive. This one's cheaper and it kind of fits the style a lot more. Go with that guy, whatever works there. As far as advice, I wish someone told me when I was uh, at the beginning, uh, start small. Uh, a lot of people, when they're like, oh man, I have this grand story I want to write. And uh, it could be like 50 issues. I'm like, no, no publisher is going to pick up a first time writer for 50 issues. Uh, so the best thing you want to do is start small. It's easier to like kind of really get that put out and start building a fan base with like a, a, a shorter project. Mm -hmm. um, and it also helps a lot with pacing. Uh, do I have that book? I, I, there, there's a book, The Art of Comic Book Writing, which is like a Bible for me. There's a lot of things I learned while writing that I was like fumbling and messing up with and I was working with other like like artists and they were like uh could you do this could you do this because I, I just didn't know how to script um yeah, like i remember my first artist i worked with i just kind of gave her word document like here you go she's like i i know i need a i need, I need a script and I, I she helped me out a lot um but yeah so start small i read that book i know it's yellow and white on the cover uh art of comic book writing uh, aside from that um starting with like a one page story to a four page story to have like a something where it would be no longer than the length of an issue like 18 pages the big reason for that is pacing is very very important um and if you can learn proper pacing then you can write a very solid story if you're starting with something that's like okay i'll, I'll use my first arc for example if you start with something six issues and you haven't like written anything consistently for a bit, you don't really understand how much space you need for certain things, how many words can fit on a page, uh, how many panels you need to like get across the scenes you need to. And that's something you only really get with experience of doing it because it, it's, it's a very unique process, scripting and planning out a comic that until you started doing it, you don't really get. Like where I'm now, like issue three, I'm much more firm in how I like doing things and how I want things. Issue one, up until that point, all I had done was a web comic. And that's a whole different beast to tackle, jumping from web comics to like doing, you know, traditional printed comics, because now your page count matters. When I was doing a web comic in there, I could just write whatever I wanted to. But now it's like, okay, well, I need to know where my page turns, I need to do this. So doing that type of practice would help tremendously for someone who's like i'm interested in comic writing or even if they had started writing comics but haven't really done too much it is it is significant to have that experience under your belt especially when you're like all right now i'm at the point where i want to hire a team and put out a product okay so my last question for you laurent is what is your idea of success so i asked that to pretty much everyone um because if you're not getting regular paychecks from a full-time job or making consistent revenue, you know, from your art, we're considered failures or we'll consider ourselves failures, right? Many of us will put our dreams on a back burner or give them up altogether because this career can be highly intimidating and competitive. So what is your idea of quote unquote success? Uh, for me personally, it's putting out a project or putting out a comic that like, this is my name on it. Like I worked on it. My team worked on it and people read it and enjoyed it like there, there's there's certain people who are like oh i want to get picked up by a publisher like there's steps for success for me i'd like to so i could have a higher reach but ultimately that's not the uh make it or break it i've in my term in my own definition i've reached the type of success i want now it's going to the next step of it like the ultimate one would be you know I, i'm not my ideas aren't that grand but like oh you know netflix show or not like you know hypothetically speaking that would be a level of success for me 
Um, but right now, let's just say I made enough to like get my comic out, like the full story, not just the first arc. Um, didn't go super far, like with as far as you know, going TV shows or all that stuff, all that jazz. But people read it, enjoyed it. That would be more than enough for me. In fact, where I'm at right now, uh, I'm I'm very happy with everything, and my next step of success is getting issue six out because that way I can have a finished arc. And not just someone read a comic and they liked it, but they read a full story arc with, where you see where these characters go and the decisions they have to make, and they found it enjoyable. So, what is the plan as far as releasing the issues? Did you plan on doing like what, like one a one a year, or maybe two a year to get? Because you already did two, and then doing two more. Is it plausible? Is that something that you maybe you want to do or can do of getting two issues out a year to complete that arc? The six issue arc. Yeah. So uh, issue three, the art for it's done. We're taking a small break because I had some personal stuff come up, but uh, we'll be picking up issue uh, for, I think June 1st was the start date for that. But yeah, right now uh, it was two issues at the end of last year. It was going to be three this year until some, some things happened that, you know, kind of took my attention away, which is why we're taking that break. But right now we're doing two issues this year. And then for sure, two issues next year. Is it going to be two issues a year every year? Uh, maybe. If the comics pick up in a way where like the finance, like the campaigns can like pay for the next one, like I'm kind of hoping for it to become self-sustaining, then I'd, my, ideally I'd want to put out uh, three issues a year. Uh, after issue six is done, I already have the full second story arc plan. It's just about like scripting the individual issues. Uh, at that point, after six, I have another comic that I do want to write. Uh, that one will only be a three-issue one. So at that point, I probably swap back and forth between what was dropping. But I do fully intend to consistently be putting out comics for as long as it's you know financially feasible because it's you know it's what I love doing. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want to touch on about Sacrifice Issue Three or the series as a whole that I may have missed? Uh, all I'll say is that if you know, like I said in the earlier pitch, if you do like stuff that's like comedy and horror, like even vaguely, I I I'd at least check out uh, the first issue. I think it's I think I have it for like three bucks um, on the digital website, which you can find that on like my own Twitter link, uh, which my Twitter handle is uh, always be evil underscore between each word. And yeah, if you like it, I could highly, I could guarantee you'd like, you know, what comes to follow because issue one is a good, like setting the stage and then issue two and three are just going to go for it. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, I want to thank the creator and comics writer of the comic series Sacrifice, Laurent Valens Jr. here to promote his upcoming third installment on Kickstarter. I highly recommend our listeners to give Laurent's Kickstarter a look, share, and back if they can when it launches fully. It's in a pre-launch stage right now. All of Laurent's socials and website to purchase the first two issues will be listed in this episode's details alongside the pre-launch Kickstarter link. Again, I'm KS Garner, and you have been listening to the Solo Nerd Podcast. Thank you. <laughs>